Wales. Wow. <laughs> that doesn't have anything to do with anything. I've just been working on my Jennifer Coolidge impression. <laughs> Although one of the books I'm going to be talking about does have the word owl in the title. <laughs> but sorry, I've just been in a funny mood recently. I have a big pile of new books which I'm really excited to read and which publishers have kindly sent me. Um, though some of them, I, a couple of them I went and bought myself because I think they sound so interesting. Uh, so I'm going to talk about all of these books most of which have been newly published in February, so they are just out. But if you've read any of these books already, want to let me know your thoughts in the comments below, or if you're interested in reading any of these books now, I would love to hear about it. So first off, I have a really interesting reprint of a book called The Sky is Falling by Lorenza Mazzetti. Uh, this was first published in 1961, and it, in this story, um, the author's kind of fictional counterpart, she and her sister, are um, taken away to live with Jewish relatives um, after their parents die and it's about um, life under the fascist regime, regime um, during World War II. Now if the name Lorenza Mazzetti um, sounds familiar to, to you it might be because Ali Smith is a big fan of this author and filmmaker. She was a pioneering filmmaker as well and uh, so Ali Smith has written a foreword to this reprint of this novel, um, but also um, the Lorenzo Mazzetti featured in Ali Smith's novel Summer, um, and one of the great things about her seasonal quartet was that she picked a different female artist in each book, a semi-obscure female artist, and um, sort of incorporated their lives into the different stories and the different seasons that um, she was writing about. And so, yeah, in uh, in summer there's Lorenza Mazzetti, and uh, yeah, it's just a really lovely um, reprint put out by Another Gaze Editions. Next there is the novel Riem Bell by Priya Hein. Uh, this is a novel set in Mauritius about a teenage girl uh, who has to leave school in in order to uh, go earn money, um, so she goes to work for one of the wealthy households on the island, um, which is kind of like across from the slums in which she grew up, and also how she is just one of like multiple generations who have had this experience. So it's about economic disparity um, on this island nation and uh, has a really beautiful cover. I mean, it looks like there are cutouts in the, the cover here, um, but actually it's all a flat surface, but, but I really like the design of this book. Coincidentally, another new novel about economic disparity on an island nation is Hungry Ghosts by Kevin Jared Hossein. Uh, this is set on Trinidad and uh, it's about uh, a young man um, who lives in a uh, sort of ramshackle neighborhood um, and he's hired uh, to go work for a wealthy couple that live on a farm, um, one of whom has disappeared. So there's a mystery at the, the center of this book as well as looking at economic and social conditions on the, the island over the, the decades. Um, also has a really beautiful cover and on the insides too um, it's really gorgeous. Um, there's this kind of sun design and, and trees. Um, so yeah, really beautiful book. Also it comes with an endorsement by Hilary Mantel um, who says, this is a deeply impressive book and I think an important one. Energy and inventiveness distinguish every page. Um, so this must have been one of um, the, the last novels um, for Hilary Mantel to give an endorsement for before she died, um, so very distinctive in that way. This Other Eden by Paul Harding. Um, this is about a couple at the very beginning of the 20th century that go to live on an island uh, off the coast of America in order to build a new life for themselves. I always think it's really interesting that America's, you know, it's famously called a nation of immigrants, um, although there were indigenous people before a lot of immigrants came and completely populated the, the country, but uh, but that uh, a lot of people that then moved there then tried to like continue on that dream and want to, to found a new society within 
the larger society. And so it's following a story um, like that, um, but also how multiple generations down the line of this, this couple who live on the island, um, how their life becomes threatened by, by outside forces, or their lifestyle becomes threatened by outside forces. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's uh, as dramatic as, as all of that. Um, but, but yeah, Paul Harding is a very respected um, winner of the, the Pulitzer Prize um, for his novel Tinkers, um, which is a book I really enjoyed. Also, this novel comes with an endorsement by Essie Adujin, who calls it a luminous, thought-provoking novel. And Essie Adujin is uh, the chair of judges um, for this year's Booker Prize. So I have the feeling uh, this isn't the last we're going to see of this book. Next is a really intriguing novel uh, called Owlish by Dorothy Tse, uh, translated by Natasha Bruce. Uh, this is the story of a literature professor um, who's just called Q, who lives in a mountainous city and who has a dull marriage and a lackluster career, but he also has this collection of antique dolls. And one day he acquires this uh, antique doll of a ballerina uh, who comes to life. And then he starts having an affair with her, and so there's this passion while uh, his life and um, the life of his city is being kind of threatened by outside forces. <laughs> so yeah, really intriguing sounding story. One Small Voice by Santano Bhattacharya. Uh, this is a novel about a boy growing up in India and uh, his family witness an act of mob vo violence in 1992, um, which leaves a big impact on him. Um, decades later, he's living in Mumbai. Um, he meets two other young men, um, and all of them are trying to figure out their place in modern-day India. Uh, so this uh, novel comes with an endorsement by Max Porter, who calls it a joy to read a full universe of feeling and effortless page-turner by a born storyteller. I have not one, but two new books, uh, both translated by Lisa Dillman. Uh, so the first is Ten Planets by Yuri Herrera. Um, this is a collection of short stories that are science fiction, noir, uh, but also philosophical investigations uh, in the tradition of Calvino and Borges. Uh, I think it sounds really intriguing. Um, it's about aliens and monsters, uh, but who is the alien and who is is the monster. Uh, so yeah, I, I think it sounds really good. I think I've read one other book by Yuri Harara before, which I thought was interesting, but wasn't like totally gripped by. But, but I am intrigued by these tales, and it's a very slender book, so it should be um, quite quick to get through. Um, the next book, um, translated by Lisa Dillman, um, who's kind of uh, the Anton Herr of this year in terms of productivity and translation, um, is a novel called Abyss by Pilar Quintana. And uh, this is a novel set in Colombia and about an uh, adolescent girl uh, whose parents um, are a bit kind of mysterious to her. Um, her father is very silent and her mother um, seems to spend a lot of time flipping through uh, like celebrity magazines and commenting on them. Um, then there's an interloper um, who comes into their lives and she starts witnessing things which uh, her parents don't think she understands but uh, she really does understand um, because quite a lot of things that children witness, um, you know, they sink in and they make an impression um, more than us adults like, believe that, that they would be. So yeah, sounds like a really intriguing story. I also have a copy of the new Granta magazine, uh, and the theme for this one is Definitive Narratives of Escape. And I always really enjoy flipping through and reading through uh, this magazine um, because it comes with photographs, uh, with poetry, um, with new fiction, um, some extracts of, of fiction. There's um, an extract of um, Catherine Lacey's um, new novel, which I'm really keen to read. Uh, there is also um, memoirist um, pieces by uh, Marina Benjamin, uh, but also by Annie 
Arnaud, um, a new translation of uh, Annie Arnaud um, essay um, called Hotel Casanova. How Not to Drown in a Glass of Water, uh, the new novel by Angie Cruz. Um, this is about a woman who moves to the United States from the Dominican Republic. Um, she thinks she's going to have this secure job in a factory, but when the recession hits, um, she's left out of a job and really struggling to survive. Um, she goes to see a job counselor and I think most of the novel is made up through uh, encounters with this job counselor and through their uh, through their interviews um, we find out a lot more about her and her past. I really enjoyed Angie Cruz's um, previous novel, Dominicana. Um, so yeah, looking forward to reading this. Tell Me How to Be by Neil Patel. Um, this is a novel about a uh, mother and son. Uh, the son is filled um, with shame about his uh, homosexuality and uh, about his alcoholism. Um, also, his, his mother has a lot of regrets um, and she's wondering if uh, maybe she should have stuck with um, the first man that she fell in love with rather than the the man she went on to to marry um, so sounds like a really intriguing story what you need from the night by laurent petit manin uh, this is a proof copy and um, so this is the the finished copy um, this is about a father uh, who is a widower um, he's left raising his two sons and uh, one of his sons grows up to have um, very different political opinions um, from what he has and is drawn into the, the life and culture of the far right. Um, so it's about this familial conflict to do with political beliefs. I also have a couple new books of nonfiction, which I think both sound really interesting and are about large societal issues. Uh, the first is Fool Proof uh, by Sander van der Linden. Uh, it's subtitled Why We Fall for Misinformation and How to Build Immunity. Um, so I think a lot of us understand uh, that one of the greatest dangers in our society is uh, there's a lot of misinformation being spread on social media and there's a tendency um, for people to go to social media first for their news before looking to reputable um, journalists who have a code of ethics they have to stick to in t terms of how they report the news and sticking to facts. And um, so it, it's looking at the, the functions of the, the brain and how we take information in what we um, count as true or false, what we might want to count as true when um, it might not come from a reliable source. And uh, and one of the interesting um, things it, it tries to help us build um, is this process of pre-bunking, uh, you know, instead of debunking um, to before, you know, as we, as we come across new information, how do we analyze it, look at it, and um, try to understand it within a larger context of whether we can actually actually believe it or not and give it any credit and and whether we should continue spreading this information or if we're going to become part of the problem in this way. Um, so yeah, really topical, interesting issue and uh, like interesting psychological way to, to look at it rather than, you know, just sort of looking at the media in general. Um, then there's a book called Tomorrow's People by Paul Moreland, um, in which, uh, which is subtitled The Future of Humanity in 10 Numbers. So he looks at at large scale um, numbers to do with rates of births, rates of death, and um, rates of migration, and what that might tell us about both the current world and the possible future of our planet. Um, and so just looking at particular figures in this way and sort of drawing conclusions from it that from that and making predictions. It's a really interesting way of looking at the, the world as a whole, sort of through these statistical facts, you know, rather um, than um, just sort of making big generalizations about it. And using this method, I'm sure he makes some generalizations as well, but it's a kind of interesting different perspective on it. I also have a new thriller novel which seems to kind of flirt with this supernatural um, called The Witch in the Well uh, by Camilla Bruce. Uh, so this is a novel about uh, a woman who is ostracized and left to drown in a well um, and a woman who becomes obsessed with 
her story and wants to write about it, but then a much popular writer comes along, wants to write about this case, but not necessarily stick to the, the facts. So it's looking at what is true in this circumstance, but also the um, dramatic things that occur as these two figures, these two different writers um, sort of battle to bring this story out into the open. And finally, I just want to say thank you to a fellow booktuber, um, Larry Has Opinions, who gifted to me these three books, the Southern Reach trilogy. I've never read Jeff Vandermeer before um, and uh, Larry <laughs> went and found that out and uh, so when uh, we were participating in a secret Santa uh, exchange um, he gave me these um, books um, sort of belatedly because I wasn't able to go to um, the Christmas celebration I was supposed to go to for our book club um, in which both I and um, Larry from Larry Has Opinions are members of and uh, yeah I was the secret Santa and so I was sick wasn't able to go to the party um, so he belated me the, um, gave me this trilogy, which I was really excited to, to receive because I'm really eager to, to read Jeff Vandermeer. I, I was um, also gifted a, another big um, recent book of Jeff Vandermeer's, but that got quite mixed reviews. But this is seen as kind of a classic of like modern science fiction about a team of scientists that go to investigate this mysterious um, place called Area X. And every team that has gone in before um, hasn't survived. And so it's about what um, they find in there and the consequences of what happens to them. And um, I think that's explored over the course of these three books. So I'm really looking forward to exploring um, these. If you think I should start with some other Jeff Vendemir books before getting to these, or if you think these are the ultimates and a good place to, to start, um, then yeah, do let me know in the comments. But yeah, I'm really eager to read um, these. It's very uh, beautiful trilogy of uh, books. Um, I like the editions of um, these books. So thank you, Larry. And thank you, all of you, for watching. Um, I hope you um, have sparked your interest in some of these books. If I have and you're um, interested in reading them now, like I said, please let me know in the comments below. Or if you have read any of these now and think I should prioritize reading any of these books, um, let me know about that as well. But hope you're doing well, reading good things, um, being friends to owls. And <laughs> I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.